Today we are making crepes and I've actually already pre-measured everything and we are going to do this out of order because I want to make the filling before I make the crepe so I can just simply fill the crepe as soon as I'm done with the crepe portion itself. So this demonstration should hopefully be a little bit faster since I've pre-measured everything. All right, so we are going to add our fruit, which is very freezer burnt. I've had this forever. Our water and our sugar. No, I'm gonna wait on the sugar. Let's just add the fruit and the water for now. I'm gonna turn this to a medium high. Basically, I want the flame to be the size of the pan. Uh, if you are electric, just no medium high. I wanna get this to a boil. I am going to be mashing up my blueberries here in a little bit when it starts to soften up. So right now they're frozen. Once it starts to soften up, I need to mash up the blueberries to release the juices into the water. the sugar and I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit. The reason why I did not add the sugar at the beginning as the directions state is because if my heat is too high and I cook this for too long you would end up with candy. Now it, the chances of that happening are pretty low but somebody who is a novice cooker might just cook and cook and cook and cook this. One year I had a group of students who literally cooked this for like 20 minutes and it just it burned to heck it did so this doesn't take very long it's actually ready right now for me to thicken it up so we learned in our notes to thicken a sauce you need to create a slurry so we're adding the water to our cornstarch the cornstarch is the thickener. The water is what's going to prevent this from lumping and clumping when I add it to my blueberries. So add that in there. Get all the good stuff out. And then I need to start stirring immediately because it's trying to thicken. You can already see that this is becoming a thick sauce. So I don't need to cook it for very long. If this were flour, I would need to cook it for another few minutes to get rid of the corn or the flour taste. But this is cornstarch, which is meant for sweet. I just turned the light or the heat off. Sweet sauces. So this doesn't really need to be cooked much further after it becoming thick. So you can see. I don't know if you can actually see that. It actually became a nice thick sauce. So flour on the other hand is for savory. That's like when you're making gravy for Thanksgiving. So now our sauce is ready. We can stick it in our crepes as soon as I get those ready as well. We are going to start by sifting our ingredients into our mixing bowl. I chose a nice 
small-ish mixing bowl because this is a cut down recipe. The full size recipe, you multiply everything by four. So this is like a quarter recipe. So I have my half a cup of flour, my confectioner sugar, which if you didn't know is powdered sugar, my pinch of salt, literally, I just took a pinch when there's a little bit of cardboard from the uh, cardboard insert on my salt. Lovely. I'm going to just sift it together to remove those lumps and clumps. That's going to help this from not being a lumpy, clumpy batter. You can see there's one little clump down there that's not going. Yes, I have clean hands. I just washed them. You just push them through with your fingers. If you don't have a sifter, you don't have to sift this. You might have to work harder at mixing it to get clumps and lumps out, but uh, definitely break up some of those big clumps like the one that I had to get with my fingers. We're going to add our milk. Half a cup of milk, half a teaspoon of vanilla, the egg. I always crack it into something else so I don't get shell in my crepe. Very good. I can actually take it and do the beginnings of, well, getting that yolk popped, that vitiline membrane, and stir her up. If I hadn't sifted this first, I would have lots of lumps and clumps and I would be mixing for a long time. In that case, maybe an electric mixer would be helpful. So your hand does get tired. Okay, so over here, I have already greased my pan. I like to do that over the sink so that I don't spray grease somewhere I don't want it to be. I am going to heat this on like, for me it's gonna be low because this is a big burner, big flame. So I'm gonna do low. I can always up my heat, but with crepes you wanna cook them slowly. I'm gonna let this preheat just a little bit and then I'm gonna add my batter. All right, this is an ice cream scoop, also known by the food industry as a portion scoop. I like to use this because it's about a quarter of a cup, and if you've noticed on the recipe, I tell you to use about three tablespoons. You don't have to be perfect in your measurements as far as the amount that you add to the batter. You just wanna make sure this can quickly cover the skillet, and I want to do it all in one swoop. So I'll show you how to do that. Go like so, and then you wanna spread it quickly. To reach the entire bottom of the pan, I'm gonna turn my heat up a little bit because it is not hot enough yet. It'll be easier to spread when you have a hotter flame. So like I said before, you can always up the heat, but you can never take it back. So, not the most beautiful crepe. I'll show you some better ones here in just a little bit. But basically what's happening now is the crepe is cooking from the bottom up and you can see this is still kind of shiny. I'll even turn this light on so you can see that. It's still kind of shiny on the surface. And you'll see in that PowerPoint demonstration that'll be attached to this assignment, the shininess when it uh, goes away because I take a picture of both shiny and not shiny. So when it's not shiny anymore is when you know you can flip it. And if your crepe is too thick, it's going to taste like rubber, and you're going to think that this recipe is disgusting. See, it's just a little bit shiny, and you can see with my rubber scraper underneath it, it is able to move the whole thing around, so it's nice and sturdy. But I could see that it's not terribly browned on this side, so I'm going to let it go a little bit longer. 
All right, we're starting to brown around the edges. So I'm actually gonna flip this over. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Now this cooking right here is to simply brown this side because it's already pretty much cooked. So that's why I'm kind of like, here we go. Touching the random center of it. Beautiful. That one's ready. So I'm gonna show you another. I'm gonna turn the heat down and I'm gonna go to the sink. I'm gonna spray this with grease. If I sprayed it over top of the stove, I'd get grease all around. And if your flame was too high, you could have a ball of fire in your face. So kitchen safety, right? All right, another three-ish tablespoons. This time I'm gonna wanna work really fast because it's nice and hot so I can get this spread before it starts to cook too much. It's terrible. I definitely grease this too much. This is what happens if you use too much grease. Just wanted to show you that. So I've had so many students in the past make crepes and they just don't turn out because they use too much grease. So it's kind of nice that I can show you the right and the wrong way to make a crepe. Even though I use too much grease in this, it's still gonna work out and taste good. It's gonna be thicker than I want it to be, so it's not gonna be as delicious as it could be. And it's gonna be that really odd shape. So the next time I go to make a crepe, I'm not gonna grease the pan at all. That's why your instructions say lightly greased. Yep, too much grease. Look at that. It looks like a brain. <laughs> Gonna turn down the heat a little bit more. And now we're not greasing the pan this time. Remember, lightly greased. So right now it's lightly greased. I'm also using a non-stick pan. Okay, and this one, Look how beautifully that is spreading. This is what's supposed to happen. So when you have just the right heat and you have just the right amount of grease, a crepe works beautifully. So I really wanted to run through the gambit of different scenarios. We saw too low of heat. We saw too high of heat. We've seen too much grease, and now just the right amount of heat and the right amount of grease. You wanna cook crepes slowly so they don't burn. It's no longer shiny on top. Let's take a look underneath. Ooh, we are beautiful on this side. Oh my goodness, look how gorgeous that is. Basically, it's cooked already inside and out on both sides, so flipping it over is a formality. I'll show you when I put this on the paper plate what the side we just took off looks like. This is the side I'm gonna put the filling into, and I'm gonna do that right now so I can show you the filling added. We're gonna come over here a little bit. This is blueberry filling. Might be sharing these with Faye for her lunch today. Now you can take it and fold the sides up if you wanted to, like this. Or you can just simply roll it up. I am going to just kind of Roll it like this and turn her over. Look how beautiful that is. Now we can take it and sprinkle it with a little bit of powdered sugar and eat it. You could also put whipped cream on top. I'm gonna to show you another thing that you can do that is delightful. Let's make another crepe here. I'm gonna give it just a tiny spritz. 
over the sink 